today we're at Davenport House for Clark and Hannah's wedding. Um, we're going to take you along with me today so you can see how I work. I'm going to be shooting this wedding solo. Um, three cameras throughout the day, uh, but mainly me on my A7S3 and my 55mm for majority. But you're going to come along with me and see how I work. Let's go. Yeah, so I always like to capture like, establishing shots of the place just to give a, a sense of where you are in the film. Um, but I'm always trying to look for, rather than just a flat shot of the building, something a little bit more creative. So often shooting through things, um, just to yeah, just create a bit of visual interest really. Especially when the sky is like, it's quite blown out like it is today. Um, like earlier on when I was framing shots through the trees just to kind of hide that uh, just grey sky. Are you alright? I'm really the videographer, are you okay? Yeah. Is everyone in here? Yes, thank you. <laughs> it's the guy with the camera. Hello. Hi. Hey, how you doing? You alright? Yeah, thank you. Now, good. Happy wedding morning. Thank you. Are you guys moving over there? At... Yeah, at, well, it should be at around 11. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll just get my bearings. But, uh, yeah, let's cool. Out where we are. Baz, your morning been alright so far? Really good, thank you. Really, yeah. really excited. I keep them Yeah, do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. We want that. Yeah, we want that. Time. Yeah. And have you spoke to Clark this morning or are you keeping it? No, I'm keeping yeah. it and keeping it. Yeah, on yeah the side, save it yeah. for that aisle. Yeah, <laughs> Good. It's the dress here. Yeah. The dress is so easy here, yeah. It is? Yeah. Can I yeah. come see? Yeah, yeah, come on. <laughs> I'll be desperate to see this. Oh, mate. That is badass, isn't it? Isn't it? So I kind of like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I am feeling that. You're going to look so good in that. So this is the start of bridal prep and my aim in this portion of the day is to get as much variety of shots as possible of all the moments that are taking place and ideally to get those shots in great light. The way I position myself here is, is what I do quite often through the morning is, is I'm shooting so that the light is coming in from the side and that gives such a, a great visual aesthetic. Light is always one of my biggest considerations when I'm shooting. I'm always looking to see where it falls and how best I can use it. And in this room, I just love how when shooting sideways to the window, that how the light hits the subjects and then falls away to darkness to the side. So I'm really making the most of that. And anytime people are walking towards that light, making sure I capture them. What time are you thinking? Of, did, you, you, did you plan to get in your dress, or do you not know yet? I've got a clue. I'm yeah. with it. So what, um, what ceremony are we? Half two ceremony? Half two. Yeah. Half two. Probably a good time would be like half yeah. one, I reckon. If you were in it, give yourself an hour to... I know, like, because that time will go quick. We can get some yeah. nice pictures of you and stuff, Bab. and you'll get to, like, chill. Yeah. And we'll get to do a reveal to people and dresses yeah, and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Move that table to put our stuff on, if that's... Oh. Or should we do it so we can keep this room clear for when the dress goes up and that? Will it, can you, is there all right or no? Yeah, you're cool. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. One of the key things you might notice from my shooting style is that I rarely take a long shot. It's always just a series of a lot shorter shots, usually around five to six seconds each. And I do this so I can get lots of variety. I like to have that variation of angle and positioning to be able to piece together little sequences for the edit. You still transporting stuff over are you mate? <laughs> still at it. Here's a good example of how I consider the light when I'm getting my shots. I'm, I'm loving this moment between Hannah and a bridesmaid but I just didn't like how the light looked shooting into that window. So I've shifted over to the side and then this shot is so much better of that same moment. And that's something I'm always considering, am I, am I getting the best shot possible? And if not, I make sure I move, change my position so I can get the best shot. Where the bridesmaids are stood right now is absolutely perfect, the way the light is hitting them. So I'm making the most of it and getting as many shots as I possibly can now, getting lots of variety. 
you never you can never guarantee in the morning where people are going to be stood and how the light's going to fall so any chance that you get with some fantastic light and some wonderful moments that's uh, when i really need to get my head down and get as many shots as physically possible moved on to getting some detail shots now I don't go crazy with detailed shots, I don't take much time, I'd much rather be spending my time getting shots of people uh, interacting. But I've just found a nice spot of light here, so I'll put the shoes in it. And there's a corner of the chair which is getting in the way a little bit, I don't like the way it looks, so I'm using a glass just to kind of block that out. So I've moved over to groom prep now and I always try and time it with that 20 minute segment when their suits are going on as that's when I can get the most variety of shots and the most interesting things are occurring. It's always a good idea to help direct where you want people to stand especially during important moments like this when you know you're going to get your best shots. So in this instance Clark was initially downstairs where the light wasn't great and it was quite a busy background. So we brought him upstairs where the background is much cleaner and we've got some great window light on him. So whilst we've got him doing his finishing touches on his suit, I'm just making sure that I move around and get lots of variety again, different angles, different positions, so I can create those sequences in the edit. Am I in your shot over here? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. go on then. Um, Ollie, my belt is down. Actually, have you got no, my it's belt? In your, it's oh, in the, in, everything's in the bag. Sorry. Don't worry. <laughs> Just giving us lots of time to get the perfect shot, mate. That's what it is. You're a professional. Does my bum look good? Yeah, amazing. <laughs> That's what I came around here for. <laughs> Good, looking fresh. Can I, can I just stick him by that window in there when he puts his jacket on real quick? Is that all right? Clark, can I stick you out here for me? Yeah, yeah. I'm just showing off now, whacking my head on that. I've, I've never hit my head on anything for being too tall. Can I get you, like, if you stand here, mate, do, and if I can get you, like, kind of adjusting your jacket like this, kind of, like, so your body's kind of 45 degrees to yeah. me. And, um, turn a little bit, so if you step away from the wall a little bit, so about there, turn a little bit more to me. That's it. And then just kind of looking towards the window as you kind of sort your jacket. Sort your dicky bow a little bit. And then if you do your jacket again for me, and check your watch, if that's all looking good. I'm just gonna come in close as you do that again, mate, if you do your cuff links. Lovely. 
<laughs> Sorry, banged up. Uh, yeah, cheers, Clark. So, yeah, we've done groom prep. Just quick getting his, getting his jacket on. That was good, that's all I need. Now we're gonna go get to bridal prep and hopefully, it's gonna be the last stages now, dress going on, reveal to dad. Then we need to consider, we're going for an outdoor ceremony now. So I need to consider myself for that. Um, so I think I might get an extra tripod because the monopod on the grass isn't gonna be great. So that's my next steps, I think. Looking to see if I can get another tripod out. It's half, half one, so it's, now's a good time to. Because in the next half an hour, it's gonna go very quick. Yeah, come on, So good. Yeah. So glad we moved outside. I know it would have been it would have been lovely inside, but that. Look at it. But that is like special, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put I think I'm gonna go for my 28 to 75 at the back. Keep it wide for when she comes down. Well, it just gives me that flexibility where I'm, I'm gonna move to the back at some point and then either adjust it to be tight on the couple from the back down the aisle or maybe keep it wide, but if I have the zoom, it gives me that flexibility to change it. I think, because she's gonna be coming down the middle, I can't have my camera in the center there. I'm gonna have it off to the side, and I'm gonna have aim as tight on the groom, and then I'm gonna move around to the back and move it to the middle of the aisle at some point. So I think it's best to probably have the um, 24 to 70 on this camera for that. And then I'll have a 35 at the front there. Um, just getting a wide angle, and then I'll be on my 55, moving around. I'm putting this one on auto ISO, with using the exposure compensation to dial in what I want. Yeah, I'll put this over here, I think, just getting a whole wide of the whole thing, like a safety. And then, I'll be roaming with my other camera. with a tripod. I'm keeping it low. Are they? <laughs> yeah, so this is how low it's gonna be, mate. Is that all right for you, shooting over it? Ideal. So this is me setting up my rear camera and I'm putting it low purposefully so the photographer, when they come to the back to shoot down the aisle, can shoot over the top of it and won't need to come in front of it. And it just means that we can both get the best shot required. So, yeah. how, how does it work in terms, because we'll, we'll obviously get out of the room when you're putting the main bit on, yeah. but is there like, is it buttons at the back? Or uh, is it just a zip? Corset. So you, it's like a tie-in situation, yeah, right, cool. Tie -in so situation. we'll be out here, when you're covered, can you give us a shout and we'll come in to capture the last bit? Yeah, absolutely. Is that all right? Yeah. It's happening. Oh, mate, you're on it. I was literally gonna <laughs> get the home. Should we all be on there? Okay. Well, take it back. Should okay. should I turn around? Should, can I turn you around so the window? So, so the window lights on you. Yeah. 
Like uh, this Bosch. Yes. Lovely. Uh, I think we're good. I think we're good now. Oh, you're happy to do it? Yeah. I've got to get the course. Remember just to tell me if I'm in your way, okay? Because sometimes I forget at this point. So this is the point where I know I'm gonna get some of my best shots of the morning. So we've positioned uh, Hannah the Bride so that she's now facing the window light, so all the best light is hitting them as her mum does her dress. I'm now gonna really busy myself in getting as many shots and variety of this moment as possible, because I know it's definitely gonna be making the film. This part of the day is always very fast paced and I'm always conscious that I'll get in the way of the photographer. So I mentioned to them beforehand that if they ever need me to move, just to let me know, because I don't want to be blocking their shots and I can easily work around them to get what I need, especially as I shoot a lot tighter than a photographer generally would. Then girls, yeah? yeah Are we going to be shoot from behind? Yeah. Yeah? Sweet. Um, I think so. If we move her, we might be able to get her in the mirror. Yeah, okay. Um, Are we good? Yeah? Good. Right, good. shall I prep the girls? Ready? Yeah, get the girls ready. Not yet, not yet. Question though, have you opened your present for the No. <laughs> yeah. Three, two, one. I might get a shot of her reaction, Hannah's reaction, real quick.
So this is the dad's first look with his daughter and I absolutely love these moments so I always make sure I'm here to capture it. Generally it's usually going to happen right before the ceremony so it means it can be quite tight for me getting set up for the ceremony. So I'm often speaking to my brides before asking them if they can be ready an hour before the ceremony is due to start. That gives us a chance to get the shot set up me'd capture it and then I can rush off to get the ceremony set up ready for that as well but these moments are so important that for me it, it's essential that I make sure that I get it captured. Come in Ali! Ali, come on, come in. Yeah. Hello. Hi. How are you? Oh, I'm going to stick him, he's doing a reading, I'm going to stick a mic on his pocket, is that alright with you? <laughs> Reading, reading, Ollie reading, sorry, Ollie reading, sorry. I'm gonna stick that in there. Yeah, cheers, my man. I'm gonna set the ceremony up. I'll see you guys in a sec. Yeah. All right. Pardon? Yeah, so I've just done that reveal. Ceremony is literally about to happen. So I've got to quickly get my camera set up. I've got like a couple of minutes basically to get down there. And I've got to get someone mic'd up for the reading, I've got to get the group mic'd up. So we'll go. Yeah, done. Look, oh, you're amazing. Yeah. Sorry, that's a quiz. So, this is how I had my camera set up for the ceremony. To start off with, I'm handheld at the top of the aisle with 55mm lens, capturing the bride as she walks down. And at the back, I have my camera on a tripod that's set to a tight shot of the groom. And then it's off to the side, I have a nice safety, which is kind of capturing the whole scene in a 35mm. Once the bride is in position at the top of the aisle, I set my A cam onto a monopod with a shot of the bride and groom and I make my way to the back to the rear camera and I set this into the middle of the aisle as a wide shot to kind of capture the whole scene from the back. My C cam is set up as a safety wide angle of the ceremony and this is the shot I'll cut back to if any of my other cameras get obstructed. It's an essential shot to have when you're solo shooting. So it's the end of the ceremony now, and whilst they were signing the register, I made sure to pack away all my cameras, and now I'm just going handheld to capture them walk back down the aisle. This is the benefit of having such minimal equipment and being packed up already after the ceremony. I could be quick on my feet to be able to capture these little moments like this that happen directly after the ceremony. If I was too busy packing my gear away at this point, I'd be completely missing these little moments. So confetti is happening out here now. I'm going to get a rear camera set up. I like the two windows in this frame. I'm going to put an autofocus like smack bang in the middle and let them do it as they just let them walk into it basically. So that recording, that's a nice frame. So when they come out, then uh, that should catch me from the back and I'm gonna be out the front next to the photographer. Could you stand by that just so people don't trip over it for me? <laughs>
just try to do my best just to get faces at the minute now, like trying to get as many shots of guests and candid shots of guests. Um, especially while they're outside in good light and it's quite even. So now as I'm going to get myself busy and around them and just try and get as many shots as possible. So this is the couple's portrait section of the day and initially I just want to make sure that the photographer gets exactly what they need. Whilst they're setting up any poses I can capture what I need in those little moments in between. I'm looking to capture plenty of movement and any interactions between the couple. Christina here likes lots of movement as well so that really works for me. But if the photographer's style was a bit more stationary, once I've got the shots they need I'd ask if I could just step in and capture some footage which has a little bit more movement in it. They come over for a show, don't they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's it. Beautiful. That, that's good. Why are we coming here? But I was doing this, I have. Oh, we've been practicing. All right. Oh. So come and put your head on me again. Ready for the photos? <laughs> yeah. We've been using a tripod, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that was good. When you did that a second ago, and the heads together, let's just again, real quick. That's it. And just look at each other now. <laughs> Makes you go cross-eyed being this close, doesn't it? But yeah. it looks great. And then both up here. Bring the heads here. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Bring your hand down. Now. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, I was the same here when we were on the back. Can I get you to one little quick kiss, yeah. please? Yeah. Sorry. It's puckering up. <laughs> yeah, that was good. <laughs> the wedding breakfast room is set up now, so I'm taking this opportunity to get a few shots of the details. I try not to spend too much time doing this because I would much rather be getting footage of guests interacting. But I do think it is important to have these shots so that the bride and groom can look back on the footage and remember exactly how the day looked. I always want to get as much footage of the guests as possible, as I know this is going to be really important to the couple. So whenever I see guests interacting with each other, I do my best to get that footage and get as many different angles and variations as possible. This is going to be my reaction shot on the bride and groom. I've got my 24 to 70 on this. So this will, yeah, tight shot on bride and groom, just get our reactions. Then I'm thinking I'll be over here and shoot with my 55. I might even punch into 85 to get a shot of whoever's speaking in that shot there. And this will be, if all else fails, this will be my safety angle, I think. That's a nice wide shot. So that'd be my safety. 
you can't see that camera in it. So if I have that there, then I'll shoot from here at whoever's speaking and I should have good coverage there. So I'm happy with that. Um, now I'm just gonna put them out of the way. Ready for the guests to enter in the room. So here the photographer's about to take their family formal photographs and you can guarantee that all the key members of the wedding party are gonna be here. So I like to be nearby so I can make sure I get footage of those key people. I'm just going to put the recorder on your pad, that's all right. And just in that gap over next to the chair, yeah? Best man one, best man one speech. Wow. Thank you. Anybody? Yeah. Phil, are you, you're giving a speech, aren't you? Yes. I'm just going to put a recorder on if that's all right, mate. Are you going to put... You, yeah, perfect. Sorry. Father the bride speech, father the bride speech. Okay, so if you could please... Are you okay? Sorry. Um, are you okay to stand here when you give it? Is that all right? Then everyone can see you and then they can see you. Thanks, Phil. Cheers, mate. Is he going to record me while I'm at the table? Best man two, best man two. So, yeah, but... Until my camera's rolling, I won't hear it. I'm not going to listen into you. I'm going to have to go there, I think, for the, for the, for the um, entrance. Yeah. That one, is that okay? don't, don't worry about That's just for speeches, so don't worry about Yeah. Okay. So, C cam. B cam is a reaction on bride and groom. I'm going to have my 50 mil here shooting across. I'm hoping to have a clean shot there of the speaker. It's really tight in here, so um, when, when there's people sat down, I might be blocking my view a little bit, but that safety camera gives me a chance to move around to where I need to if, if when people sit down, it's blocking my shot. But um, just got one mic left to put on the groom. They're not actually speaking into a, a mic, so I'm just putting mics in their pockets. Um, so I just got one put on the groom and we're all done. So this is my final setup for the speeches. I have my A-cam, which is isolating the speaker, tracking them so we've got full coverage of the person giving the speech. I also then have my B-cam, which is set up as a dedicated reaction camera of the couple, just to pick up on their reactions during the speech. And then I have my C-cam, which is the wide angle safety of the room. This is just to give a bit of context so I can cut to a wide shot every now and again. But it also means I've got full coverage of the room if I ever need to move any of my cameras. I can just cut back to this shot while I do that. From an audio point of view, I've just got TX650s in the pockets of each of the speakers. Usually I'd have one attached to the microphone, but in this instance they decided not to use one. So we're going to get drone shots now. Normally I like to get them at the start of the day, but we had a the florist van was outside the front and it was raining as well. So I'm just going to get them now. Um, I don't go mad with it, I like to just fly up and kind of do like a semicircle of the venue um, and then maybe some of the, the surrounding fields and just for like scene setting. It mainly makes its way into like my longer films that I do. In my highlight films I don't often put much drone into it. Please check it on the map. Take off. That's nice. Oh, the lights hitting the fields, so that'll be quite a nice opening shot. Let's get that. The 
It gets to finish their meal now and they've all come outside and the light is great at this moment so I'm making the most of it and getting lots more footage of them. So here we are moving on to the golden hour portrait shoot. I really enjoy shooting at this time of day. I love working with this light. So quite often before the wedding, I'm speaking to my couples and letting them know that at this certain time, whenever the sun is gonna be setting on their wedding day is when I really like to take them out for a little walk. My preferred way of shooting at golden hour is to have the couple positioned so that the sun is directly behind them. And you'll see in a minute, I'll position them here so that the sun is, is directly behind them, but also we have some tree cover as well. So the light's coming through the trees, which means we're not blowing out the sky. We're getting a nice dark background with light breaking through. And that for me is the perfect scenario for golden hour light. So the direction to the couple at this point, and we just got them positioned where exactly where we want them. And it's just getting them to interact with each other. And I just like them to ignore us completely, just be involved with each other. And then I'm going to quickly move around and get as many different angles as possible because when the light is this good, I know every shot I'm going to get here is going to be perfect for the film. So I just want to get as much variation as I possibly can. If you can, like, while you're holding each other, if you can kind of like just look close to me. And then I want you to do a little gentle, like, little, little sway like this. Just a very little movement, just say, yeah. <laughs> very excited. So at that point I was using Paul Raleigh who was doing the behind the scenes footage for me as a as a model for how I wanted the couple to move. And I just, I just like to get that slight little bit of movement in the footage. So for, especially when portraits, when there's not much movement going on in the image, if I can get the couple to slightly sway, it just gives a sense of movement and just, makes the picture a little bit more dynamic. We've changed up the pose here to give us a bit of variation. And now the couple are in that new position, I'm moving myself around to get some close-ups. This is just giving me different angles so I can piece together some sequences in the edit. Movement is key to getting some nice dynamic footage and getting a couple to walk either towards you or away from you is guaranteed to give you some great shots. The only direction I really give them at this point is to not look directly at the camera and just to look at each other.
So I'll get my lights set up now for the first dance. Um, I use just two LED panels. I'm going to put one in this corner, shooting that way. And yeah, I'll probably have one in the other corner going across. Adding lights to the dance floor can make a massive difference to your footage. These LEDs aren't very powerful, but they put out just enough light to add some shape. For the dance floor, I'll move on to my 35mm lens. I'm just getting quite a standard shot here of the cake cut, but once the cake's cleared out of the way, I'm going to quickly set up a second camera on a tripod to capture the first dance while I stay handheld. Because these guys have got a choreographed dance set up for their first dance, I wanted that second angle to be able to deliver it in full. My general approach for the dance floor is to just get in amongst the action. Using a 35mm lens means I can get quite close and get imagery that's quite immersive. As always, I'm looking for as many different angles as possible, so I'm just constantly moving around to get that variety. And so this is the last shot of the night and we're doing a sparkler exit. And this is how I usually have it set up with two rows of people holding the sparklers. Then I like to be positioned halfway down. This allows me to remain still for the first part while the bride and groom walk towards me. Then when they get close, I just reposition and move backwards. So we've just done sparklers. Um, the dance floor is cleared out now. People are having their evening food. I got plenty of dancing stuff from early on. So now's time to pack up and go. Yeah, when it comes to the evening, I, I, I don't put a time limit on what I shoot. I usually say about an hour after the first dance as a guide. Um, but basically when I've got what I need, that's when it's time to go. And I've got everything I need now. Good dance floor footage, um, enough to make the edit, put that together. So yeah, time to wrap up.